Hello everyone! In this video I'll discuss relationship between reducible and irreducible representations. First, a brief recap of things that we have already said about the relationship between reducible and irreducible representations. If you want to skip it, please look at the timestamp. Anyway, so far we said that we want to represent the effect of symmetry operations using matrices. In order to do that, we can take some vectors and place them in some strategic places in the molecule, for instance along the bonds or at every atom of the molecule. These vectors are said to form basis of the representation. Equally well, we can use functions as basis, for instance wave function that describe orbitals. Next, we can perform symmetry operations on these vectors or functions and we get a series of numbers. I told you that these are the reducible representations. I also told you that we can obtain many different reducible representations depending on what basis we choose. However, each symmetry group has a finite list of so-called irreducible representations, and every reducible representation can be broken down into some irreducible representations. For instance, we can see that 2020 reduces to A1 plus B1. What we have just said is true, but rather superficial. So let's talk about relationship between reducible and irreducible representations in more detail. Let's take ammonia molecule. Let's place vectors along the bonds and let's say we want to rotate clockwise. The direction of rotation does not affect the character, but let's be specific. Also, let's agree on the position of the reflection planes. Let's say that sigma v1 goes through r1, etc. Under c31 operation, r1 goes to r3 and so on, and we get these three equations, which we can write in this form. Symmetry operation, vector, transformation matrix, vector. Now please pause the video and try to write down the remaining transformation matrices. So these are the remaining transformation matrices for basis vectors R1, R2 and R3. Now is the important bit. We can do similarity transformation on these transformation matrices using matrices X and X inverse. As a result, we get a new set of matrices. Let's do a specific example for C31. We take matrix X, multiply by transformation matrix for C31, then multiply by X inverse, and we get this matrix, which as it turns out, is a transformation matrix for the basis vectors X, Y, and Z. The similarity transformation that we just did is physically equivalent to changing the set of basis vectors used for the representation, in this case, from R1, R2, and R3 to X, Y, and Z. And more generally, for any reducible representation, we can find some matrix X and X inverse, which transform such a set of matrices into block diagonal matrices, where each block corresponds to irreducible representation. In case you cannot quite remember, block diagonal matrix is a square diagonal matrix in which the diagonal elements are square matrices of any size and the off-diagonal elements are zeros. And the beauty of such matrices is that we can multiply and effectively treat each of the blocks separately. So what we are doing is actually reducing the original matrix to matrices of smaller dimensions. I spoke about the block diagonal matrices in the video on rotation and reflection matrices for C3V. So coming back to the main topic, we can see that the character of this reducible representation is 300111. Next, let's look at the matrices in a block diagonal form. We can see two by two blocks, and I'm sure you recognize that they are the matrices for the E representation for C3V that we derived in one of the previous videos. The characters of these blocks are 2 minus 1 minus 1, 0, 0, 0. Then we have one by one block that corresponds to A1, the totally symmetric representation, which means each entry is one. When we add E and A1 component-wise, we see that we get the character for the reducible representation. That should not surprise you, as we already seen the proof that similarity transformation does not change the character of conjugated matrices. Please pause the video and make sure you recall when we were dealing with conjugated matrices.
The answer is classes. We performed similarity transformations to find out which symmetry operations belong to the same class. And at the end of the video on GOT, I showed you a proof that conjugated matrices have the same character. The proof is rather trivial. We rename AP as X and A inverse as Y and use the property that trace of YX equals trace of XY. This last property, that the trace of some matrix AB is equal to trace of matrix BA, can be easily seen when you perform multiplication on symbols. So since operations belonging to the same class always have the same character for a given representation, we can shorten the reducible representation to just 3, 0, 1. And by looking at the character table for C3V, we can also see that the reducible representation is equal to E plus A1. So to reiterate, if for a given set of matrices, which constitute a representation, there exists a matrix X which transforms them into the block diagonal form, that means the original set of matrices makes up a reducible representation. If, on the other hand, it is not possible to find a matrix X which would transform the original set of matrices into block diagonal form, then such a set of matrices are already in the simplest form. Please realize that up to this point, we did not have to talk about transforming a representation into a block diagonal form, since all the vectors that we used as basis were X, Y, or Z vectors. For every symmetry group, you will find irreducible representations that describe entities with X, Y, and Z directionality, and so there was no need to do any transformation on the representations derived in such a way. For instance, if we take vectors X, Y, and Z and perform symmetry operations for C to V, then we will find the set of 3 by 3 matrices will be made of 3 1 by 1 blocks. For C3V symmetry, for instance, the set of 3 by 3 matrices will be divided into 2 by 2 block and 1 by 1 block. And for instance, for TD symmetry, the representation will not be reducible. We've seen that in previous videos. Lastly, let's acknowledge that we have some problems. First, how to find out the matrix X suitable for the similarity transformation. The answer is that they are not easy to find, and ideally, we want to find a more convenient way of reducing representations that does not depend on the matrix X. We will be talking about it in the next video. Second issue is that the matrices for reducible representations get big very quickly. For instance, the matrices for reducible representation that we were working with in this video were 3 by 3, because we took three basis vectors. But if we choose to anchor vectors X, Y, and Z into each of the atoms of ammonia molecule, that will lead to a set of matrices which are 12 by 12. The answer to this issue is quite straightforward, considering the fact that we are only interested in the characters of these matrices. I'm sure you already see that only the vectors that transform into themselves, or negative of themselves, contribute to the character. In two videos' time, we are going to go through all symmetry operations and see how they contribute to the character of reducible matrices. So that's all I have for you today. I hope it helps. Thank you for watching. Bye!